Amen. Good morning, each and every one. Welcome home this morning to another to another broadcast and to another service with Cochran Ridge Baptist Church. We're so thankful that each and every one of you have tuned this way and are tuning this way. We're looking forward to what God has in store for us this morning, looking for a great time in the Lord and around the Word of God. My prayer is that you have been excited about going to church this morning and some of you may say going to church well I just went from one room to another well praise God you're able to get up and go from one room to another and able to get around the Word of God and so we'll just go to church wherever you may be whether it's in your recliner or at your or at your breakfast table where wherever you may be around the Word of God my prayer is you'll pull out the Bible open up the word and follow along with us and ask God to speak to you about what he would want you to glean from his message today. It's not the message of Jeff Childers, it's not the message of Cochran Ridge Baptist Church, but it's the message of the living God wanting to speak to you and give to you what you stand in need of this morning. We are excited to have Sister Mary Chaco uh, this morning being with us and singing some songs, and we're just going to look forward to that here in just a few moments. And just looking forward to what God's going to do. There's a lot of prayer requests, and we'll talk about that at, here in just a few moments, a little bit later, uh, about prayer requests and the needs that are there. But they are many, and they are great. I ask the, I ask the family of God here at Cochran Ridge continue to, to be faithful uh, to your church and, and to send in your tithes and your offerings to Brother Bob. And so many have, have done that, and I want to thank you for doing that, and thank you for your faithfulness in giving to the Lord and giving your tithes and offerings. And may God bless you. Let's go to the Lord in prayer, and then after we have a word of prayer, then Sister Mary will come around and sing with us tonight. I do want to make mention that tonight, Brother Jamie Dickerson will be bringing the message, and Sister Deborah Evans will be uh, singing for us tonight as well. So looking forward to tonight. Hope you can tune in and watch at 5 o'clock. Uh, uh, once again, I encourage you to like, to comment, and to share uh, today's broadcast with others so the, so the gospel of the good news can be spread around to a lost and dying world and be an encouragement to the children of God. Let us go to the Lord in prayer. Lord, Heavenly Father, Lord, we love you. God, we thank you this morning. God, thank you for all thy many blessings. Heavenly Father, thank you for this time once again that you've given us. Heavenly Father, Lord, how we long, Father, Lord, to have an in-person service, worship, Lord, and with, with our family. And God, you know how our heart longs for that, and I know others do. But God, you know what's best. And God, I pray, Father, Lord, your leadership and guidance in this. Heavenly Father, Lord, that whenever you seem fit, God, that you will open up the doors, God, that we may be able to come in. Lord, you will drop the restrictions. God, you will drop that that has been asked of the church to do and asked of the people to do. God, I pray, Lord, let us be good citizens. Father, of, that we follow that that God has that, that man has given us and that God has asked us to follow. Now, Heavenly Father, we thank you for this time. God, we thank you for an opportunity to worship you in spirit and in truth. Heavenly Father, I pray, Lord, that you touch hearts and change lives. Heavenly Father, Lord, this morning, souls will be saved and your children will draw closer unto you. Heavenly Father, the backslider will be reclaimed. Lord, those that, Father, may be drifted, Father, may find an anchor, Lord, this morning. God, I pray, Lord, for that you do that that's needful. God, thank you for all that have come out. God, thank you for all that are watching. Now, Heavenly Father, Lord, I pray that you would do that that's most needful, Lord, in each and every one of our hearts. God, speak to us, Father. Become real like you haven't been real uh, in, in prior, uh, uh, prior in our lives. Now, God, thank you for this time. Father, we want to give you honor and glory, Lord, because you're worthy of it all. Lord, in our sweet name, we humbly pray. Amen. Amen. Sister Mary, if you would, come around and sing for us. My high tower, a light in the dark hour. Without him, I could not see. He 
is closer than a brother and above him there's no other without him where would i be oh jesus what a friend is he and he is the rock upon which i stand he's a present help in time of need when this old world has left me all alone I can feel him walking right by me When everyone walks out That's when he walks in Proving once again He's my dearest friend He promised he'd go with me always Even till the end Just as long as this world stands He promised he would hold my hand And I would never walk alone He said he'd go with me always Through dark times and through dark days and He would be my friend and my God Oh Jesus you're the best friend in my life oh and he is the rock for which i stand he's a present help in time of need when this old world has left me all alone i can feel him walking right by me when everyone walks out that's when he walks in proving once again he's my dearest friend he promised he'd go with me always even till the end yes he promised he'd go with me always even do you remember when you were drowning in a sea of sin going down for the last time then you called upon his name he reached out his nail pierced hands and he lifted you out so remember where you were back then and thank him for where you are now give him the glory what he's done in your heart he took you from sin and strife gave a new start Stay for us. 
and his amazing grace of God that he saved our souls and just thank him for all that he's done. Will you sing that song one more time for us, please? Amen. Come on, Sister Mary. Yes, come on. Today I faced a mountain Once again it seems so tall I tried to climb it, but it seemed not to fall. So I knelt and I called on Jesus, just as always I felt his presence. His hand of mercy it lifted me just in time. Come on now. I want to thank you. Yes, him. I want to praise him. His grace has been sufficient. And like before, he's given victory one more time. He was 
was always standing by my side when the valley was low and the river was wide. I want to thank him. I want to praise him one more time. Yes, amen. Come on. Now looking back upon this journey since the day I first met him so many times yeah. thank you Lord his mercy has rescued me so once again I'll come before him and one more time I'll stand to praise him for all his mercy for he has been so good to me Yes, amen. Come on now. I want to thank him. I want to praise him. His grace has been sufficient. And like before, yes. he's given victory one more time. He was always standing by my side when the valley was over. Praise him this morning, folks. Come on. He's always standing right by my side when the valley was low and the river was wide. I want to thank him. I want to praise him one more time. Amen. I was going to do this one for Cindy and Dan. She had message me several times over this period that we've been going through she's an encouragement i want yes. to know that she's an encouragement to me yeah yes and she's an encouragement to my whole family i want y'all pray for us pray for me it's a struggle to watch church at home and sit here and look at out this empty building but i'm yeah. thankful that i was able to come here today i pray that god always finds me faithful Yes. To do what I'm supposed to do, what he'd have me to do. That's right. Come on. That should be all of our prayer that we're faithful to do what he would have us to do. It's been a long journey, but there's an end in sight. And I'm thankful. So pray for me as I sing this song. Come on. Broken from the journey. I'm beaten by the struggle, straining to see his hand at work in me. Yeah, come on. In the middle of confusion, my doubts and my delusions, I wonder if God is even listening when he speaks. I yes, know yep. his voice. When he speaks, my soul does rejoice. And when he speaks, my heart knows no fear. Oh, the peace when he speaks. I've struggled with the answers in a sea of trouble. Yes. Drowning in the waves of the ocean's tide In my desperate situation In present complications I look for a safe place to run out When he speaks, I know his voice Jesus. Go this way. Amen. Thank you, Mary. I'll take care of that. 
Amen. Aren't you glad that we got a God that speaks? <laughs> we got a God that hears, and we got a God that listens. And I'm thankful that you and I should be a people, His children, that when God speaks, we listen. Because when we cry out earnestly, when we cry out to Him in prayer, either a prayer of thanksgiving or a prayer of need, we have the promise of the Word of God that God hears our prayers. If, there's not a, if there is not a hindrance between us and the Lord, God hears our prayers. Those that sometimes people, you will hear people say and you will hear them uh, when times uh, aren't going well and something tragic happens. Some will say, well, I'm not a religious person, but I think we need to pray. Well, did you know that uh, you can call me streaky-headed on this if you want to, hard shell. But my friend, if you don't know Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, they're not going to. God's not listening for that prayer. He hears that prayer, but He doesn't listen for that prayer. If you know what I'm saying, that only prayer He's listening from those that are lost and don't know Him from the free pardon of sin is God forgive me, God will you save me, and speaking to them in their own words about their own need of a Savior. And then those of us that are saved this uh, today, when we pray. If there's not a hindrance between us and the Lord, then our prayers can be effective. But if, there, but if there's a problem, if there's, if there's sin in our lives, if there's a hindrance between us and the Lord, then the Lord is listening for a prayer of God forgive me, God cleanse me, God help me, God restore me, and then God will listen. But I'm thankful for a God that hears and a God that listens. Let me take a quick look. In just a few moments, I do want to let some others know that just a few moments, uh, WCB Radio is trying something brand new, and we are the first one to do this. Cochran Ridge Baptist Church is honored to try to do this. But coming on at 10 o'clock, uh, we will be going live, not only on Facebook Live, but we will be going live on WCB Radio, which is 1500 a.m., 1520 a.m., and 1300 a.m. as well. Uh, they're, they're doing this. They have found a way to be able to do this uh, to different churches, and they're going to be a, going to different churches and doing that. And so I want you to pray about that, and I'm thankful that God gave this open door of opportunity for this type of ministry. I do want to ask you to pray. There's been a great there's been great heartache in families, and there's things that we have, uh, have heard from different families that are in need. And, I'm, and I know there's other needs that have not even been mentioned, but God knows all about it. But I want you to pray for Brother Dr. Mike Bagwell and his family at the loss of his son, Joel. Uh, unexpectedly on Wednesday, Dr. Bagwell had his, uh, his son's funeral yesterday. So I want you to continue to pray for... Uh, Joel Bagwell's family and Dr. Mike Bagwell's family and all that is uh, there and uh, is suffering and heartbroken and full of sorrow uh, this morning. But also Brother Jerry Skipper uh, went home to be with glory uh, this week and coming up Tuesday there will be a drive-in funeral service uh, at Victory Baptist Church off Mulberry Rock Road and that's where Brother Jerry will be uh, the interment, he'll be laid to rest there. Uh, the service will be starting at 12 o'clock, and we have the honor and privilege of being and taking part in that homegoing service. So I want you to pray for us, pray for the Skipper family as well. If you have your Bibles, if you will turn with me to 1 Kings chapter number 18. 1 Kings chapter number 18. I want to read you while you're turning to 1 Kings chapter Number 18, I want to read you uh, two other verses from the Word of God. It's found in Galatians chapter number 6, starting in verse number 7. Galatians chapter number 6, verse number 7, it says, Be not deceived, God is not mocked. For whatsoever a man soweth, that shall he also reap. For he that soweth to his flesh shall reap corruption. But he that soweth to the Spirit shall reap 
of the Spirit reap life everlasting. And let us not be weary in well-doing, for in due season we shall reap if we faint not. Listen, folks, we need to continue on. Keep going. Keep praying. Keep seeking. Keep asking God. Keep seeking God's face. Keep seeking God's guidance and continue to pray. And listen, we don't, don't, don't faint. Don't be weary in this time of separation, in this time of, of, great, of great sorrow, of great fear, of great doubt that's going on in our land and country. We cannot faint. We cannot faint. Why? Because we're a child of God. We should not faint. We should keep praying and keep doing that that God would have us to do. Hebrews chapter number 11, verse number 6, it says, But without faith, but without faith, it is impossible to please Him. For he that cometh to God must believe that He is, and that He is a rewarder of them that diligently seek Him. I think that's worth reading again. Ask God to let that speak to you. But without faith, you got to have faith this morning. You got to have faith in the Lord. You got to have faith and trust Him 100%. Even if you, you, we cannot be a, we cannot be a Dove Bar Christian that's 99.9% .9 full of faith. We have to have 100% complete faith because even that small percentage of that is something that's not right, something that's not pure, makes us 100% unpure. We need to have faith. But without faith, it is impossible to please Him. For he that cometh to God must believe that he is, and that he is a rewarder of them that diligently seek him. What kind of reward will you have? How diligently are you seeking God and the things of God? This morning is once again, if you'll turn with me to Acts chapter number, I'm sorry, I said Acts. 1 Kings chapter number 18. 1 Kings chapter Number 18. I want to start reading in verse number 41. 1 Kings chapter number 18 in verse number 41. And by now, I think that should be that those that are listening to us by the way of radio through WCB Radio, we, we thank you for coming and we thank you for being a part of this broadcast service in this, this brand new ministry of WCB Radio. If, you've, if you did not hear, we're in 1 Kings chapter number 18, starting in verse number 41, with the thought this morning of absence and abundance. Absence and and abundance this morning. And it says in verse number 41 of the holy word of God, And Elijah said unto Ahab, Get thee up and drink, for there is a sound of abundance of rain. So Ahab went up to eat and, and to drink, and Elijah went up to the top of Mount Carmel, and he cast himself down upon the earth and put his face between his knees. And he said to his servant, Go up now and look toward the sea. And he went up and looked. And said, there is nothing. And he said, go again. Seven times he did this. And it came to pass as the, as the servant, it came to pass at the seventh time that he said, behold, there ariseth a little cloud out of the sea like a man's hand. And he said, go up and say unto Ahab, prepare thy chariot and get thee down that the rain stop thee not. And it came to pass in the meanwhile that the heavens were black with clouds and the wind and there was a great rain. And Ahab rode and went to Jezreel. And the hand of the Lord was upon Elijah and he girded up his loins and ran before Ahab unto the entrance of Jezreel. This, this morning as we go to the Lord in prayer, we want to thank and let, you, let your minds think and ask God to help you on this thought of absence and abundance. Lord, Heavenly Father, Lord, we love you and we thank you this morning. God, we thank you for the pure word of God. God, we thank you for the word of God that gives us, that, that convicts us. God, we thank you for your blessed word, Father, Lord, that encourages us and lifts us up. Heavenly Father, we thank you for the word of God that points us to your son, Jesus, and our salvation. Now, God, I thank you for this time. Father, thank you for all those that are, that are, that are watching by the way of Facebook Live. Lord, those that are listening by WCB Radio and all their, and all their channels. God, and 
Lord, by those that may be watching later on by the way of YouTube. God, and never how, Lord, that God, you have sent out this gospel, sent out this message. God, I want to thank you for it. God, I pray that you'd find a lodging place, Lord, in many, many hearts, God. Those that are lost, God, I pray that they would, it would be the, a lodging place to, of their salvation. Lord, those that are saved this morning, but maybe backslidden or cold and indifferent or drifting away, God, I pray this will be a place that will find a lodging place in their hearts, Lord, to draw them back closer unto thee and get, and get into complete, pure fellowship with you. Now, Lord, thank you for this time. Father, thank you for what you're going to do in your blessed word. Father, thank you for what's going to be accomplished here today in my heart and the hearts of those that are listening. Now, Lord, I pray that you'd ever do that that's most needful. In thy sweet name we pray. Amen. I want us to talk a little bit of right quickly, but chapter number 18 of the book of 1 Kings tells us that Elijah come and he faced the wicked king Ahab of Israel. Chapter number 18, verse number 1. And as he was come, and this was his first appearance after three and a half years. Chapter number 17, verse number 1. God spoke to, spoke to Elijah the Tishbite and told him to go to the wicked king and tell him that there would be no rain. That there would be, that there would be a drought. That there would be no rain until Elijah spoke the word, then the rain would come again. Can I say this morning that the word here in chapter number 17 and the word in here in chapter number 18 is not the word of Elijah, but it's the word of God. Elijah is just the messenger of the Lord that, that God spoke to to go and tell the children of Israel and tell the king about, about the drought and about the coming rain. See, the children of Israel, as you read in chapter number 18, at the beginning of chapter number 18, you'll find that the children of Israel here uh, is their, their condition of how spiritually their condition, you can see them in a, in, in a picture or of a person here of, of, of uh, my mind was went blank, of Obed. And as Obed went to, uh, out to look for grass for the horses because the kingdom was dry and everything was drying up and there was hardly no water and there was no grassland and he was out trying to find some grass for the king's cattle and the king's horses and he, he come across Elijah and when he come across Elijah, Elijah startled him and, and he looked unto Elijah and Elijah spoke to him and said, you go tell the king, I'm paraphrasing, you go tell the king that Elisha is here and I, and want, and I am coming to speak to King Ahab. And Obed was, had a little trust issue with the man of God. Can I say that this is where we find a lot of people today in the house of God. Sometimes if you're, or if you're this type of Obed, and the type of Obed is an individual uh, this morning that is spiritually, that is secret. He's a secret agent man, I guess if you want to call it that. He's a secret agent man for the Lord. He says that he, he was for the Lord Jehovah, that he trusted the Lord Jehovah, that he he believed in the Lord Jehovah, but he was not openly letting others know where he stood with God. And yet he served the King Ahab. And so a lot of times we find a lot of people in our churches are the Obeds of today. They are see, they're the secret agent man serving, serving Jehovah. They say they're saved. They go to church and yet they're out in the world and they serve self and they serve the flesh and they serve the world and they serve Satan. Yet when it comes down to it, they're not really trusting the man of God. They're not really trusting the word of God. They're trying to depend upon themselves and he tells, he, he tells him, he says, hey, uh, I'm not going to go back to the king because if I go back to the king and I tell the king that I saw you and then while I'm gone, God calls you to go somewhere else and we can't find you, then the king is going to kill me because for the last three and a half years the king has went from city to city and town to town and had people looking for you and were unable to find you and yet you want me to go tell him that you're coming and, and, and Elijah says you go tell him that I'm coming and here in verse number one they come in Elijah tells him that now there's going to be rain and God is going to and God's going to have rain come and he calls the prophets of Baal and the, and the, and the 400 uh, prophets of the grove and all this there and so they're there and while <coughs> while they're speaking and while Elisha is doing that we see the sad condition of the children of Israel as I said spiritually you can see the picture uh, the uh, 
people picture or the person picture of the children of Israel, their spiritual condition was just like Obed. They were secretly worshiping God and yet they were worshiping the flesh, they were worshiping the world, they were worshiping other idols. Whatever benefited them at that time, that's who they were for. And it's sad to say, just as here in the word of God, when Elijah confronted them about the sin in their life and, and spoke to them and told them about the sin that they did not, it says that they said not a word. And that's a sad state where we find our church today and we find people today that, that even when confronted about their sin, they have no conviction even when the nation totally was confronted with their sin. It says they answered not a word. Why? Because they had no conviction because they feel that what they were doing was all right. They felt what they were doing was okay. They felt like they had no sin, that there was no reason for conviction. And yet Elijah wanted to show them and he called them closer that there was a only one true God. And this morning, my friend, you and I need to understand, we may say there is a God and, there, and we believe in Jesus Christ, but let me tell you, if we don't truly worship Him and we don't truly openly and publicly without fear claim Him and testify of Him, then my friend, sometimes we are that secret agent Obadiah man. But yet here, here they're saying, we don't need to be secret agent. We don't need it. God wants you to worship me openly. Wants you to worship me publicly. Wants you to tell the world about who I am and not be secretive about it. And then here, as they go down and they find what they're doing and, and you, we see that the children of Israel in verse number 21 of chapter number 18 that they are they're sort of limping in their in their teeter-tottering, in their what we say fence-straddling, whatever benefited them, if it was beneficial for them to worship Jehovah, that's what they did. But yet when sin arose in their life and they liked the sin and they did not want to be convicted of that sin, they went to Baal or they went to another idol worship and they found out that worshiping and whatever, they were worshiping the idol and whatever they found in their lives that would benefit them at that time, that's who they worship. And Elijah said, it's time to stop the fence straddling. It's time to stop this, this what's going on. God is the only one true God. Amen. Now, verse number 30. One of the saddest statements in the Bible, in the Old Testament says that Elijah had to go repair the altar of God that was broken down. Did you know the altar of God was broken? You know why it was? Because the children of Israel didn't care for God or didn't care about the things of God and didn't care and did not think the altar was useful and they needed not to sacrifice anymore to the one true God. And yet they felt like they let it fall in disrepair. And yet many lives today, spiritually, we don't come down and we don't sacrifice on an altar. We have the altars here that where we come and where we pray, but we don't have an altar here set up as the Old Testament and where they come and sacrifice, but still our altars are in disrepair today. Why? Because the children of God don't think they're important. They don't think they're needful anymore. They don't think they're useful anymore. They don't, they, you could go to church after church after church and listen, I'm not trying to be ugly, but if you have removed your altars and you, there's something wrong in your church, there's something wrong with your worship when we have removed the altars of God from our Father's house. And yet the altars are removed, they're broken down, they're in need of repair, they're not there, and whatever it may be, that is a spiritual sad condition of God's people into here in 1 Kings chapter number 18. It's also relevant today and sad today when God's people of today that has the blessed word of God, the Old Testament and the New Testament, have removed the altars because they think they're no longer needed. 
And yet we see in verse number 30, then verse number 36, and on down to verse number 37, I want to see, you can go back and read it, but there is a 62 word prayer of faith. 62 words that Elijah prayed. And fire, fire fell. See, there was a, a, a I'm going to say this, there was a competition. It was God versus idols. It was, a, it was one true God versus what you and I will find out here in just a few moments of a non-existent God. And as they are going and they're, and, they're, and they're praying, and we see here that Elijah spoke that 62-word prayer, fire fell, and it said that it consumed the sacrifice, that the fire fell. When it fell, it not only consumed the sacrifice, but it consumed the wood. It consumed the stones that were laid around uh, the altar. It, was cons it consumed the dirt that was laid in and ear in and nearby the altar and in the trench and then I like how the word of God describes this. It says that it licked up the water. God was sucking, taking it all in. Taking in the worship. Taking in the sacrifice. There was nothing left behind to prove that he was the one true God. Now some, some may have asked and, and some may ask and, and well, why didn't Elijah just build him a brand new altar? Well, the people knew this was the altar of Jehovah. Elijah was trying to make sure that the people did not think he was introducing a brand new God. That he's introducing a brand new way of worship. How they worshiped, the old style of worship, the old way of worship was the way they should have worshiped and it still, it was prevalent back then it should be prevalent today. The same goes for our worship, our day. The, the, our style of worship may not, be, may not be popular, but it's prevalent. It's needful today. I'm talking about the truth of the Word of God. I'm not talking about spitting and hollering. Some, some people are called and they bring a message differently, but God's called me this way and this is the only way I know to do it. This is the way I'm going to do it until God tells me otherwise, until God shows me differently. But the Word of God and the, and the message of God and the praise of God and the worship of God is prevalent today as it was back then. Now, we hear in that verse 36 and verse 37. Now, I want to move on to verse number 41. We see here in verse number 41, we see where God is moving and God is doing different things in life. God is saying that you and I first have to get right. Now, listen, think about this. God stopped the rain. God told Elijah, you go tell the king. He's a wicked king. He doesn't follow me. He doesn't care about me. Neither do the children of Israel. You go tell them that judgment is coming because of their sin. And the judgment come and there was no rain for three and a half years. And God spoke to him. Then he said, you go tell the king that rain shall come. And then we see that that comes down and where God showed himself. God revealed himself worthy of worship and worthy to get right. See, what, what takes place here and what takes place today is God wants God's people to get right. People want to do their own thing, want to go their own way, and still want the blessings and the benefit of God. They still want God on their side. They still want God's blessings. They still want God's intervention. They still want God's love. They still want to feel and have the joy of, of, of the love of God. But my friend, until we get right, listen, our sin cannot be condoned. God's not going to condone your sin. Even that closet sin you and I have in our lives, God doesn't condone it. He wants us, he, 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 he doesn't want it not only, He doesn't condone it, He doesn't want us to cover it up. He wants you and I to confront our sin and then to, and, 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 and not only confront our sin, but then confess our sin. 
As we see here in the word of God that were the children of Israel and they were uh, in their sin and they didn't think about what was going on and really didn't care about what was going on. They thought God was condoning their sin. They thought they could go to God any old time, any old way, and God would be happy to hear from them. Did you know that, that, that mindset, that heart set is not only in 1 Kings, but it's in our society today that we can live any way we want want to. We can walk away from God. We cannot do what God wants us to do. We can live like the devil, but yet when we have a need in our life, we can come knocking on Jehovah's door and he'll be so glad to hear from us. He'll be so thankful that we thought of him and come, come up to his door and knocked on his door and said, hey, we want to talk to you. We want you to do something for us. No, God doesn't condone our sin. God doesn't want to cover our sin or cover our, our for us to cover our sin but God wants you and I Lord to confess our sin and to confront our sin and do something about it and here we see the word of God that God when the children of Israel found themselves in a, and God showed himself true God showed himself faithful God showed himself real God showed himself the God to be the God of worship and him only the people said the, 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 the people said the Lord he is God the Lord he is God then they believed why they got right and I'm thankful that when people get right, or individually or corporately, that we see great revival take place in our lives and in our land. See, you can have a personal revival and everybody else around you doesn't know what's taking place, doesn't know why the change has happened, but God has spoken to you and you have a personal revival taking place. But can I say, man, I love those personal revivals. I love when God speaks to us. I love when God shows us our, our sins and we have to confront our sins and we confess our sins and God forgives us and cleanses us from our sins and all our unrighteousness. I'm, I'm thankful about that, but man, isn't it good when corporately the body of believers, men, women, boys and girls that are lost that don't know Jesus Christ they get, get, they get convicted they get saved and those that are saved may have grown cold and indifferent or may have just got a little lazy in their worship a little lazy in what they do for God and God comes and speaks to them and shows them their sin and they get turned around and all of a sudden we have revival listen there was revival taking place here you can look at what was taking place and, uh, down through here but in verse number 40, you'll also see that God wants you and I to deal with and to get rid of sin in our lives. Verse number 40 talks about that all, the, that all those false prophets, and I will just read it. Verse number 40 of 1 Kings says, And Elijah said unto them, Take the prophets of Baal. Let not one of them escape. And he took them, and they took them, and Elijah brought them down to the brook of Kishon uh, and slew them there. God wants you and I to eradicate the sin out of our lives. He doesn't want that something may crop back up. He doesn't want just, he doesn't want the sin just to be pushed aside. He doesn't want the sin to be kicked out of the camp. He wants the sin to be dealt with and reckoned with right then so it can be removed, never to show back up again. And yet, our lives, we want to push it off to the side. We want to not harm it. We do not want to hurt its feelings. And yet, it comes back to harm us time and time again. See, there's faith. As we have spoke about and we read in Hebrews and, and uh, uh, we read in, excuse me, we read in Hebrews. And then we read here, I want to look at some faith, some faith. His faith is acting on God's promise. See it says, but the just shall live by his faith. That's Habakkuk 2.4. In Hebrews chapter number 11, verse number 6 again, it says, but without faith is it impossible to please him. For he that cometh to God must believe that he is, and he is a rewarder of them that diligently seek him. It's been said that Charles Spurgeon has said this, faith is reason at rest in God. 
Think about that. We'll say it again. Because it took me like two times when I read that to really for it to sink in. Faith is reason at rest in God. A.W. Tozer said faith is taking God at his word. See, faith is acting on God's promises. God said there would be no rain. Elijah said there would be no rain and believed it. Then, let, can I... Let me just say this, acting in this faith. When, let's just do this. 1 Kings chapter number 17. And Elijah the Tisbite, who was the inhabitants of Gilead, said unto Ahab, As the Lord of God Israel liveth, before whom I stand, there shall be no dew or no rain these years, but according to my word. Did you know that, and I'm, and I'm and nowhere in the Word of God does it say this, but did you know I believe spiritually that Elijah could have walked around with an umbrella in his hand? Elijah and his umbrella. I'm sure people were going, look at him. Why has he got an umbrella in his hand? Because God said there was going to be a time of rain at his word. And Elijah did not want to be caught without an umbrella if God said, today's the day it's going to rain. And can I say that in chapter number 18, we see Elijah and his umbrella. We see Elijah being faithful. We see Elijah faithfully acting upon what God said. It's not what Elijah said. It's not what, but, 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 but Elijah was acting upon what God had spoken to him and what God had told him and what God had promised him that there was going to come rain only by his word. So spiritually, he had an umbrella. And can I say this morning as I'm standing here preaching and looking out through the uh, open doors into the foyer and through the foyer out through the glass doors out into the parking lot, it's raining today. Today would be a day to have a today would be a great day to have an umbrella. That wouldn't be too difficult to see people walking around with an umbrella. But with a day of three and a half years of, 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 of barrenness, of dryness, where there has been no rain, the waters have dried up, the rivers have dried up, the crops have, the crops have died, the grass has withered away, the cattle, the cattle are dying and failing because of, no, because of no feed and no water. My friend, it would be odd and unusual to see somebody walking around with an umbrella in their hand. See, that's faith. You and I need to have that type of faith to follow the word and to follow the leadership of God and act upon what he had said. See, there was an announcement of no rain in chapter number 17. There was an announcement of coming rain in chapter number 18. And yet, Elijah had his umbrella. His umbrella of faith. The faith that covered him. The faith that sheltered him. The faith that helped him. See, Elijah accepted God's word to be true. And then he acted upon that truth. This morning and today, you and I need to believe and trust God's word. And then act upon that truth. If we trust God's word, then we need to act upon God's word. Without Listen, it's a, it is easy to say. It's easy to say. I have faith. But it's a whole different story to walk by faith. It is easy to say you've got faith, but man, it's differently when you have to walk by faith. And Elijah was acting upon, his faith was acting upon the promises of God's word. God promised that they would be raised. There was no rain as of yet. And we see him, he goes here in verse number 41. He climbs up to the height of Mount Carmel and says that he falls down in a prostrate position. And he bows himself over almost like in a fetal position. But, but upon his knees and his head was on the ground. And his head was between his legs. And he was praying and seeking God's face. And he asked the servant, go up and view, to view and see what you see. And as, as the servant went, listen, he had a a prayer. 
He prayed that he was acting upon the promises of God and he prayed accordingly by the promise of the Lord. Not his word, by not what he thought, but by the promises. And listen, that sort of tells me that in the word of God, there's some promises that we can rely on. All the promises of God we can rely on and we can pray in that prayer. See, he didn't pray about anything else. He prayed that the promise, that God promised him that there was going to be rain. There was no rain at the time of his prayer. There was no rain what was go taking place in his, uh, in his life and for three and a half years prior to that. Yet, God said there was going to be rain. He was looking for rain. He was expecting rain. He told, he told his servant, he said, you go look and see if there's rain. And while he was praying, the servant went and looked and looked out over the sea and he come back and he said, there's nothing, there's no rain as, as the clear skies and no cloud in a cloudless day and the sun beating down. Elijah was saying, there's going to be rain. God said there was going to be rain and I'm going to pray for rain. I'm going to trust God that there's rain. I'm going to trust God at his timing. I'm going to trust God at his word. Even though I don't see a cloud, even though I don't know there's a cloud, it says, it says here, let's go back and read verse number 41. And Elijah said unto Ahab, Get thee up, eat and drink, for there is a sound of abundance of rain. Now, I do not believe that Elijah heard the distant rumbling of thunder. I do not believe he heard the distant sound of thunder that had in, his, in, uh, in his audible, audibly he did not hear thunder in his ear. You know where he heard the thunder? In his heart. He trusted God and he heard the thunder and the sound of rain in his heart. And as God was moving and God was leading and God was guiding, he heard that. He didn't hear it by his word. He heard it by his heart. That helps me, that encourages me, that helps me in my life that I don't need to listen to all the sounds that are going on and some things that God's got going on behind the scenes and God, 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 God has for me and God has for you. We may not see it, we may not hear it, we may not smell it, but God says it's there, I've got a promise. He said, I'll never leave you, I'll never forsake you, I'll always be with you. If you ask me, you shall receive. If you're lost, I'll save you. If you're wayward, I'll bring you back home and forgive you. Thank God for the sound of the abundance of rain. He, they heard, Elijah heard the sound in his heart. And as I was reading that the other day, and as I read it again this morning, and as I looked at it, and I said, oh God, God help me hear you more than I ever have before. Not from others, not from music, not from anything. But God, from your spirit, speak to me that I may hear what you have to say. And there is a sound of abundance of rain. You know what that rain represented? It represented a blessing of God. It represented the children of Israel. the only true God and God brought forth the blessing the sound of abundance of rain listen faith heard the storm long before the eyes ever saw the cloud see as Elijah was praying he continued to pray did you know because when he sent the servant the first time and the servant come back and said, clear skies, boss. The word of God says Elijah did not waver. It did not hurt. Uh, it did not hurt Elijah. It did not set him back. He just continued to pray. Why? Because he was praying and expecting God to be 
true and faithful to his word and to his promise. And my friend, what a blessing that is. God is true and he is faithful to his word. You can take that to the bank. You can be on Mount Carmel and look for the and look for the grave and look for the blessing. Even though it's a, even though it's a cloudless day, even though the sun is shining, even though it's barren and dry. Oh my friend, a blessing is on the way. And yet when he went back, he went back a second time. He, so he sent the servant back and the servant back come back with the same message. Nothing, boss. Nothing. There's no rain. We sent him back. And again the third time, the fourth time, the fifth time, the sixth time, the seventh time, he come back and he said, hey, I see out of the sea there is a cloud that, is a, that, is, that looks like a man's hand. And it says in the next verse that the skies drew dark and the winds began to blow. And let me tell you, the skies may look dark. The winds might, might be blowing in your life. But can I tell you, the blessing is on it its way. The blessing is coming. God is going to send the rain. God's going to send the blessing your way. Why? Because we have confronted. We have faith and we need to pray and be more like Elijah and have faith that's acting on God's promises. Have a prayer that's anchored in God's word. He had confidence that day that nothing was going that nothing was going to set him back. Nothing was going to make him wait. He had confidence God was going to answer. We need to have confidence that God's going to answer your prayer request. I've no, uh, I've no, of, I've known of people and heard uh, and had and had people tell me, preacher, I've been praying for years for my husband. I've been praying for years for my wife. I've been praying for years for my children, and God has not answered. Can I say, hang on, my child, the answer and the blessing is on its way. Not the first time. But he had a continuance of prayer, Paul. Setbacks didn't set him back. Just because God didn't answer immediately did not disturb and did not upset Elijah. Why? Because he knew what God had promised him. He said, well, it may not be today. It may be tomorrow. And can I say, my friend, I look, I have the same thought. Look, God is coming back. And I've, people have told me and you have heard as well. I've heard that all my life. I don't believe he's coming back. Well, it may not be today. It may not be tomorrow. But by faith, my prayer and expectation is come soon, come quickly, oh Lord Jesus. And he's coming quick. Right quickly, and I want to finish up with this. Not only that, but can I say this? That blessings are obtained by God's promises. See, that was a sign of rain. The servant come back and said, Sir, <laughs> there's a cloud <laughs> in the middle of nowhere. There's a cloud and there's a sign that's going to rain. And he said, you go tell Elijah that he needs to hurry up, that he needs to get up, he needs to get going. Why? Because there's going to be, there's coming a gully washer. There's coming not just a sprinkle. There's coming not just a mist, but there's coming a rain. There's coming a blessing so strong and so much that it's going to wash out the gullies of your last sin. They're going to clean them out and you're going to be blessed by it. You go tell Elijah he's got to hurry up or he's going to get caught in this rain, in this downpour. And not only that, there's a sign of rain. See, Elijah was excited. He prayed, and he prayed, and he prayed. And when the servant came back and said, yes sir, there's a, there is a cloud. Looks like a man's hand. Did you know Elijah quit praying? Why? Because God was answering the prayer. The answer had come. He got up and, if, and somehow God gave him superhuman strength. It said that he girded himself and he outran the king's chariot back to the city. Oh, my friend, that's a blessing. That's knowing that God is going to do something. And then... Not only the sign of rain, but the sending of rain. God is going to send the rain. Some people look at rain as, 
as a problem, as, as something that's bad, as something that's wrong. But here in the Word of God, in this chapter, the rain is a blessing that God is sending. And there's a sound of abundance of rain. My friend, this morning, you may not see the cloud. You may have prayed and prayed and prayed. And you think God hasn't answered you and have forgotten you. But can I say, open up the Word of God and trust the Word of God and trust the promises of God that God is going to answer you. He's going to give you a blessing. He's got a blessing for you and He is going to give it by His Word. Our prayers need our... the Lord. Let me, let me put it this way. God's promises really need to be our plea of prayer. Why? We know what God says. If God says this and God says that, then our prayers need to line up with the promises of God. If they line up with the promises of God, God will make sure that they happen in our lives. Listen, the absence or the abundance of blessings. You know why you may have an absence of blessings in your life? See, my last name is Childers. <laughs> we have, we, we, we kid at our family about when something goes wrong, we look at each other and go, oh, well, it's because you're a Childers. That's the absence of a blessing. And then we look at other people's lives and we look at other things that go on and we say, well, you're a, and say their last name. I, I, I tell Pam all the time, I say, well, you're a Daniel. You've been blessed. Can I say, we're all been blessed. But uh, the absence of a blessing this morning may be due to the fact that there's sin in your life. That sin that you need to confront and you need to confess. They could be an abundance. Let me put it this way. There could be the sound of abundance of rain. The sound of abundance of rain means it's not here yet. It's on its way. Child of God, don't give up. Don't get disheartened. Don't get downtrodden. God is on His way. Or there could be the sending of a gully washer in your life. God, and His Word says He wants to open up the windows of heaven and pour you out a blessing that you can't even contain. You know what that is? That's a gully washer blessing. And it may, that gully washer blessing may be the abundance because you are more like Elijah than you are Obadiah. And without the blessings and the absence, you could be an Obadiah. Where are you this morning? Why, the abundance or the absence of blessings in your life? The abundance of God's love, mercy, and grace. His amazing grace. I want to do something. I want to just read you this. Most people know it, but we don't really, sometimes we don't really listen to the words. Amazing grace, it says, amazing grace, how sweet the sound that saved a wrench like me. I once was lost, but now I'm found. Was blind, but now I see. Twas grace that taught my heart to fear, and grace my fears relieved. <laughs> Think about that line. Hallelujah. How precious did that grace appear the hour I first believed. Through many dangers, toils, and snares, I've already come. Tis grace that brought me safe thus far, and grace will lead me home. When we've been there 10,000 years, bright shining as the sun, we've no less days to sing God's praise than when we first begun. Absence or abundance. Can I say this? God's promised. God's, we need to stand upon the word of God. We need to have faith. We need to pray. And we need to expect the blessings of God. 
But that absence and those blessings are all dependent upon you and not God. God doesn't have to conjure up a blessing. God doesn't have to conjure up salvation. God is willing. God is waiting for you to get right with Him. Lost man, woman, boy or girl, if you see this, today's a good day to get right. And you'll have abundance in your life. Abundant life. Not just, not just this life, but God has promised you and I an abundant life. My friend, child of God, today... You need to get right with him. It's time you quit playing church. That's where children of Israel were. They were, they were playing church. Whatever benefited them, the church or, or, the, or God or the world, that's who they were with at that particular time. They bounced back and forth. We need to get right with God this morning. We want the abundance of rain. We all want blessings. There's nobody that I have ever spoken with that does not, first of all, doesn't want to go to heaven. Secondly, they don't want the blessings of God in their life or to be blessed by God. Well, to do that, we've got to be an Elisha. Have faith and act upon the promises of God. My friend, then you can have the abundance. Don't leave. Don't, don't, don't leave the broadcast. Don't stop watching with absence of abundance in your life. God's waiting on you to call upon Him. Let us pray. Lord, Heavenly Father, God, we're so thankful for this another opportunity to come this way. God, Lord, to worship you in spirit and in truth. God, to thank you for your blessed word and thank you for your time and thank you for all that's been said and done. Thank you for Mary and the songs. And God, wow, what a special blessing that was. God, I pray that you would continue, Lord, to use her in a mighty way. God, thank you for this time around your blessed word. Oh, God, the absence or abundance. Lord, you've, played, you've, you've told us clearly that's up to us. God, I'm tired of the absence. I'm tired of the dryness. I'm tired of no water, no spirit. I'm tired, God, of just being, it being so dry. God, I need a refreshing. God, refresh us with the refreshing rain of the, of, of the abundance of your blessings in our lives the abundance of grace. Oh God, thank you for this time. Thank you for this day. God, thank you for the abundance, the sound of the abundance of rain. God, we may not have it. We may not think we've got it, but God, you said it's on the way. If we'll just trust you and never give up and be faithful. God, let us be found faithful and trust in you and acting by faith upon your promises. In thy sweet name we pray. Amen. May God bless you. Good morning. Thank you for coming. Thank you for being a part of the broadcast. Thank you for being part of Facebook Live. And for those that will eventually watch it on YouTube, thank you for tuning in YouTube. And uh, would you please do something for me? Would you like this? Would you comment? Would you also share it? Would you also go ahead and be a part of our YouTube and those that are listening by the way of Word Christian Broadcasting. Thank you. Thank you for the ministry of Word Christian Broadcasting and Brother Ken and all them that are there that have made this possible. May God bless you till we meet again. Welcome home, my friend. Welcome home.